Okay, and welcome to Mr. Ridley's RMT revision, and this is number 10, and we're looking in this at plastic shaping processes. So before we start, we need to look at the two main types of plastics. There are two classes of plastics. There are thermoplastics. These can be melted and reshaped over and over again, and they are easily recycled. The other type of plastics is thermosetting plastics. These can't be reshaped, and they retain their form even in extreme heat. So these are much more difficult to recycle. That's thermosetting plastics. So for the, the processes we're looking at in this clip are all thermoplastics. These can be easily melted and shaped over and over, and they are easily recycled. So we're looking at processes for thermoplastics. The first one we're going to look at is injection molding. This is used to make complex 3D shapes such as toys, electronic product casings, and kitchen equipment. The advantages of injection molding are very complex forms can be produced. If you look at Buzz Lightyear there, and the, the different shapes and parts can all be produced easily. High volume, so it's a mass production process, and the products can have color built into them, so the, the products are made colored. The disadvantage are the molds are expensive, so initial setup costs are high, and some very complex forms are impossible to manufacture, and we'll look at that later. Injection molding, so this is the main process of injection molding. So if we look, we're moving from here along to here. So first of all, thermoplastic granules such as hips are injected into a hopper. The plastic granules are fed into a hopper, the granules are heated and a screw thread here on an Archimedean screw turns to drive the molten plastic forward. A highly accurate split steel, usually steel mould is used and the plastic is injected into it under pressure. The temperature of the mould is controlled, it soon cools and the finished plastic item is then ejected, sprung out. So that's injection moulding. The advantages of injection molding. This cordless chainsaw strip down shows the webbing reinforcements. So in here, if you look at this, these, these reinforcements, this webbing reinforcement, these um, moldings, the detail here, the strengthening ribs, these parts would not be possible with other processes like vacuum forming. It just can't be, a product like this has to be made by injection molding. Now we're looking at another process. These bottles are made by blow molding. Blow molding is a, is a process which is used to make mainly hollow objects like bottles and containers. The advantages of blow molding are that it rapidly, very quickly produces objects with narrow necks, very high production rates, so another mass production process. Again, the disadvantages, like injection molding, the molds are very expensive, so initial setup costs are high. But unlike injection molding, the surface finish is often poor and it can only be used for thin walled materials, often used for things like this PET bottle here. So that's blow molding. Now we're going to have a look at the process of blow molding. Blow molding, again, moving across to here, um, <clears throat> a tool is made like this. So here you can see the metal tool. A uh, parason, a sort of tube of plastic, comes down, which is heated from an extruder. The, the mould halves move together close, trapping it and sealing it. Air is then blown in from the top here to inflate the bottle like a balloon um, until it hits the edges of the mould. The mould then cools, it's con temperature controlled, it cools, releasing from the mould, the moulds open. Uh, the bottle is extracted and any extra parts are cut off and that is a very very quick process for manufacturing mass producing plastic bottles that is blow molding. Now we're going to look at vacuum forming. Vacuum forming is a process which shapes thermoplastics um, usually acrylic, hips and PVC. It produces hollow shapes. It can be a mass production process so it can be fully automated but it also can be a batch production process. It's a process that we use in school. It can create accurate, consistent shapes. It needs a mold and a sheet of plastic is heated and sealed over the top of it. So let's have a quick look at this process. Oh, sorry, um, a vac the advantages of this process, it's a low cost process. It's a quick process. The upper mold can add 
extra detail such as logos and lettering. And the, the disadvantages of it are uh, deep moulds can result in stretch thin walls and it's limited to simple designs using a, just a single wall thickness. Vacuum forming machine is often used in school projects to shape thermoplastic hips. So you may have used it in school, a vacuum forming machine to shape hips. So let's look at the process. A correctly shaped mould here is placed in the vac former. The plastic is heated until it's soft. Then we move here. The mould and bed are raised, they're moved up, and a pump sucks the air out. The atmospheric pressure pushes the mold, the soft plastic over the mould. This is then allowed to cool and it can be removed from the mould and the vac former. So there's the sheet of plastic and then it, it moulds over the former there. So that is vacuum forming. It's important to remember that for vacuum forming a 10 degree or so release angle is necessary to allow the vac forming, so to allow the plastic sheet to come off of the former. Otherwise it, it's very difficult to release. So that's a, another limitation of vacuum forming. Now we're going to look at line bending. Line bending is used to make simple shapes out of sheet polymer such as furniture and often used for shop point of sale displays, menus in restaurants, things like that. The advantages are a very cheap and simple process. The jigs are very simple, could just be a block of wood. Um, but the disadvantage is it can only produce these kind of limited straight molded forms. So that's line bending. This is another process which might, you may have used in school. Now, plastic forming processes can often be described by using flow diagrams. So here's a flow diagram here to show the process of line bending a piece of acrylic. And you can see here this form of showing thermoplastic is held above a hot strip heating, weight while plastic soften, bend plastic on former, allow to cool. This flow diagram is a very common type of exam question asking you to give a process particularly a plastic forming process in the form of a flow diagram 3d printing now 3d printing is another plastic forming process the printer la layers up the plastic to form a solid object um, this is quite often in schools if you've got this in school you will have seen this process and it is another plastic forming process if we just look here 3d printing is a process that uses both CAD computer aided design and CAM computer aided manufacture so how does it work well an idea is thought up a, um, some software for example Google SketchUp a drawing package like Google SketchUp the idea is drawn on Google SketchUp this design can then be sent to a 3D printer. This could be near the computer, or the design could be emailed to a 3D print company somewhere else in the world. These are sent, they're printed, and then the product, finished product, which is the computer-aided manufacture piece bit, um, can be made in ABS or PLA. PLA, it's important to remember, is a biopolymer. It doesn't, it's a plastic. It's the only one in this video that isn't made from oil. Okay, so let's just have a look at pre the 3D printing process a bit closer. Plastic, like PLA, is formed on a reel. It is heated, for, uh, pushed into a heated nozzle. The nozzle lays down a bead of plastic drops, which kind of forms beads and different layers to form a layer of the shape. And then the bed of the printer moves down a millimetre or so, just less than that, a, a small amount, and... the bed of the printer moves down and another layer is put down. Now it's time for questions. Which class of plastics can be melted and reshaped over and over again? Thermoplastics. Which plastics forming process uses PLA, which is a biopolymer? It is 3D printing. Name three different plastics shaping and forming processes. 
three different processes. Injection molding, vacuum forming, and line bending. Which four of these mold shapes would not work as vacuum forming molds? So two will work, four won't. Number one, no it won't. Number two, yes it will work as a mold. Number three, no. Number four, yes. Number five, no. And number six, no. It's important to remember that vacuum forming molds need a release angle to work properly. Plastic processes. This was made by vacuum forming. This product is made from high impact polystyrene hips. This was made by 3D printing. This product is made from PLA. This was made by blow molding. This product is made from PET. Well, that was plastic processes. Thank you for watching and good luck in the exam.